In this video, I want to talk about a few things. Goal setting, time management, managing expectations, and hobbying and why it's important. Before I get to any of that, I want to point out that I am not claiming to be an expert and I don't have or claim to have all the answers. I do want to, however, just share with you from my personal experience and some of the tricks that I've learned and developed that help me manage what can sometimes feel like an overwhelming workload. So welcome back and to the new viewers and new subscribers, welcome to Rabbit Hole Hobbies. Now at the time that I'm filming this, I haven't put out a video in about a month and a half and I can generally put out one video a week. Sometimes I can get a little bit more done when I film in batch, like when I painted those miniatures for my players in my D&D campaign in the fall. And that allows me to really focus on developing more content because I've covered a month's worth of channel content in the span of a few days. But as it happens, life does not care about your plan. And I found myself all of a sudden six weeks in without putting out a video. During the first few weeks, it was really getting to me that I couldn't uphold my goal that I'd set for 50 videos for the year, you know, one video a week with a very small buffer. And I needed to figure out a way to give myself a break. So I started thinking, and I'm a chronic overthinker, but all that thinking brought me back to something that I'd studied in school that has helped me out before in difficult times. Rousseau's exploration of freedom in his examination of social contract theory. I know, but it essentially boils down to this. True freedom is not doing whatever you want without restriction. You have no control over your desires and therefore letting pure desire dictate your actions unrestricted is acting in an uncontrolled manner and therefore cannot be considered free. True freedom is not only being able to create rules and laws that will dictate how you act, but also finding the strength and power to obey those rules and laws that you have set out for yourself. Now, at first this might seem a little strange needing rules and laws to find freedom, but it, I think it makes perfect sense and I wanna use an example to demonstrate. So we can take something as simple as smoking. It is common knowledge that nicotine is highly addictive and that quitting smoking is super tough. It is also common knowledge that smokers often say that they can quit whenever they want. You know, I just don't want to right now. So is the desire driven by addiction to smoke with or without the knowledge of the health hazards that are present really an act of freedom? I don't think so. The desire, the addiction, the habit, these are all factors that are at varying degrees out of your control. But using reason and rationality to say, I need to quit smoking for my health or I need to try and get off the cigarettes because I have no control over my need for nicotine or whatever the reason. And then mustering up all the willpower you have and following through, acting on something that you have reasonably determined yourself in a controlled manner to be the best course of action. That is where you find yourself truly starting to become free. And I also wanna mention the takeaway from this is nothing to do with addiction, uh, which is a much larger conversation, uh, nor am I saying that all addiction can be overcome with like a simple epiphany. I am not an addiction specialist and I'm only speaking from personal experience. Mm -hmm. But the notion that self-regulation and control as a means of attaining an achievable form of freedom like blew me away. Suddenly freedom became something like actually within reach uh, but I don't know if we should go any further down that rabbit hole right now either. If you are interested in examining that concept a little bit further, leave me a comment. So how does this examination of freedom help with setting goals, managing time, and hobbying? Well, because it starts the process of determining priorities. I have a lot of important aspects in my life, as I'm sure many of you do, and it's super important to have your priorities in check, whatever they are. For me, in this instance, I got really busy at work, we're planning our wedding, with COVID restrictions lifting, there are lots of people we want to see and things we want to do, we have chores, relationships, work, and personal time, time for recovery and relaxation. Now, I'm not going to get super into the nitty gritty of all this, but what's important is that once I started thinking about Rousseau again, and that took a minute to examine everything going on in my life, I was able to realize where my priorities are right now, and then all of a sudden, I was okay with letting rabbit hole hobbies kind of take a break for a bit. So this whole process started because I felt that I had let myself down by not, not meeting a goal I'd set out for myself that was supposed to be attainable. But when I had set that goal and its level of, and its assumed level of attainability, I had not factored in, I didn't count for external factors or conflicting priorities. So when setting goals, I like to set three phases of goals. The concept of these phases of goals is something I learned from my dad who always used to help me gain a little bit of perspective on issues or problems I was facing. He always used to tell me like, you're sitting down here at 300 feet, you gotta get back up to 30,000 feet and see the whole big picture or vice versa. That really helped me put problems that I was trying to solve into perspective. And now when I set goals for myself, I set them in three phases, 30,000 feet, 
300 feet and right at ground level. For rabbit hole hobbies, goal set at 30,000 feet or is something like, I wanna build a real and engaging community around the content that I'm producing. Or I want to become a monetized creator for sharing stuff that I'm passionate about. This is the bigger picture. This is the end game, what I am striving for. This level of goal gives me direction so when I get to the lower levels, I'm not fumbling around in the dark. And it can always change too. Maybe in a year, my priorities will be reevaluated and change and you know, the bigger picture will change and that's okay. Setting goals at 300 feet is like, how do I do this in a general sense? Well, I need to get better at producing content. I need to get more efficient at editing, more organized with my ideas and my planning. Maybe a good way to do this is by producing and publishing 50 videos this year. Uh, this is where we narrow down a little bit. We're starting to see the details in the landscape now. This level is like looking for a landing site while parachuting. I'm scanning the area. I have a good idea of what's going on everywhere. Where am I gonna land? That's where goals at the ground level come in. Looking at the problem right in the eyes, face to face. I need to focus today on this video. I am going to get better at audio mastering because I think it will elevate my content. I have always wanted to try fly fishing, so I am going to make a video about that because I want to learn how to do it and share that experience with people who might find value in it. I need to narrow down in on my thumbnail stylizing. At this level, you've landed. The bigger picture is gone. I have to deal with, with what's right in front of me right now. I find that breaking down my goal setting into these phases is beneficial for a variety of reasons. It lets me find a clear direction and separate different aspects of whatever I'm doing into manageable sizes. This is important to me for a variety of reasons. First and foremost being that it's easier to navigate multiple little landing zones than to sit up at 30,000 feet with the whole big picture in front of you and trying to do it all at once. That's too overwhelming. Nothing's gonna get done right. It's gonna take forever. It also allows me to feel victorious and proud of myself more often, which is super important. If my only goal is to get 5 billion subscribers on my channel, I'm gonna be miserable all the time. But if that's my 30,000 feet goal, and today my ground level goal is just to engage with some comments from viewers on a few of my videos to start to create that kind of community, bam! I've completed a goal that is getting me closer to my end game. I can use that to measure my progress and cel celebrate a small but meaningful victory. I also find that breaking objectives and goals into manageable sections with clearly defined borders of what is encompassed in that particular set of actions uh, is essential for me when it comes to time management. My whole day is comprised of many different objectives that are stepping stones to many different goals. Anything from making sure I have enough caffeine in the morning and packing my lunch for work so that I can function like a human being to making sure my dog gets walked so that he's happy and healthy and not peeing on the floor. Making sure my relationship is prospering by checking in or ensuring that we have quality time together. All these aspects of life have their level of priority, require time, effort, and intention. And by taking the time to climb up to 30,000 feet each day and slowly come back down to earth, every day I'm able to organize my time in an effective manner to bring myself further along towards the bigger picture. I can't walk my dog for six hours one day and then not walk him at all for the next three or four days. I can't talk to my partner for six or eight straight hours and then ignore her for the rest of the week. Just like I can't spend all my time doing hobbies and nothing else. Managing your time is what makes it possible to succeed in what you want to do and defining success is up to you. So finally, I want to touch in on why I think hobbies are so important and how that relates to the rest of what we've been talking about. Hobbies are passion. What we each choose to do for pleasure in our spare time every chance we get. It's easier to find time and dedication and intention for stuff you want to do, or the things that we're passionate about. These are the things that drive people, that define a large part of who they are. And that's what makes everybody unique and wonderful and interesting. What makes life fun and exciting. Everything I've talked about up to this point, everything I've talked about up until this point has been through the lens of my hobbies. Goal setting, time management, passion, and it all started because for a brief period of time, I did not have enough time to participate in my hobbies as I would have liked. But navigating this has taught me more about how I should be interacting with my whole, my life as a whole. Everything you do should be because you choose to do it. And therefore everything in your life should be treated to some measure or another as a hobby. With intention and in manageable sections that are clearly defined stepping stones to success however you decide to measure it. Hobbies and passion teach us who we are, but also how we should be. And I think when it comes to setting our expectations of ourselves, we have to be true to ourselves. Set those goals and achieve them because you are the one that is in control. Decide who you want to be 
and how you want to do it and be free. So that's my take on Rousseau freedom, time management, goal setting and hobbies. And uh, I hope you found some value in this. If you have anything to contribute to this conversation, please leave me a comment below. And as a final update of the channel, because I have been you know, offline for so long, there are things coming up. I've got some more modular walls and working on finishing. And if you follow me on Instagram at rabbit hole underscore hobbies, you'll see that I've been working on them for quite some time, but I'm getting close. I promise. I've just finished another book review, a great book recommendation I have. We got more videos and updates from the garden. I've been practicing some cooking and I've perfected a couple recipes that are going to go up. I got some minis I got to paint. We just came back from a nice camping trip. We're going to talk about some camping gear. There's all kinds of stuff coming up. And if you're interested in any of that, hit subscribe and the notification bell because as always, we got lots of fun stuff coming up. You can do inside note. Stay creative. Peace.